limits of indeterminate form. In this set of videos, we are going to tackle and evaluate limit of the functions which do not really exist at the limiting value. And one of the characteristics which you will find is that when you substitute that limiting value, you get 0 over 0. So whenever you get 0 over 0 by substituting limiting value in both numerator and denominator, then we say that it is an indeterminate of the form 0 over 0. So let's check this. So if I put 2 here, I get 4 minus 2 square, which is 0, right? And 2 minus 2 is also 0. So we get 0 over 0, correct? In the next example, which is square root of 1 plus x minus 1 over x, if I put x as 0, I get square root of 1. Square root of 1 is 1 and 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay. And if I put x as 0, I again get 0. Correct? If I put 3 in this absolute value, 3 minus 3 is 0. 3 minus 3 is 0. We again get 0 over 0. Now, here also, if I put h as 0, so I get 3 squared, which is 9. And 9 minus 9 is 0. And h is also 0. Correct? In this case, if I put x equals to 0, I get 0 plus 8. Cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. x approaching 0, so we get 0 over 0. The last, x is approaching 5. If I plug in 5, the limiting value here in the expression, I get 1 over 5. 1 over 5 minus 5 is 0, and you know 5 minus 5 is also 0. So what we noticed in all these examples is that when we substitute the limiting value, we get 0 in the numerator and 0 in the denominator. It is important to note that 0 over 0 is not mathematically defined, but it gives you an idea that if it is approaching 2, the next minus 2 is a factor of both numerator and denominator. If it is approaching 0, x minus 0 or x is a factor of both numerator and denominator. If it is approaching 3, then x minus 3 is a factor, kind of, of both numerator and denominator. If it is approaching 5 and you are getting 0 over 0, that means numerator has a factor x minus 5 and the denominator x minus 5 is clearly visible here, right? So sometimes a factor is hidden. So that gives us an idea that we can actually simplify these expressions by techniques and then evaluate the limit, right? So in all these cases, we are calling them indeterminate form since after substituting the limiting value, we get 0 over 0, right? Now, to find the limit, now we are not saying that limit exists for all of them. Limit may or may not exist, right? Now to find the limit, we need to simplify them. To simplify, we use these techniques. So one technique is factoring. For example, if I factor this, I get 2 minus x times 2 plus x. Well, this is difference of squares. Then 2 minus x, 2 minus x will cancel out. I will be left with 2 plus x. I can substitute 2, so I get 2 plus 2 is 4, which is my limit for this function as x approaches 2, correct? So that is a good technique to use. So we'll have few examples where we'll explore how and when to use factoring. Next technique is rationalization. Wherever you have a square root like this, we can rationalize the function. Once you rationalize, then you can simplify and find the limit. So here, to rationalize, what are you going to do? You're going to multiply and divide by square root of 1 plus x plus 1. Right? And then when you expand the numerator, you get difference of squares and you can factor out x. Correct? So that is what we are going to do wherever we have a square root function. So rationalization, remember, will be used for expressions where we have square root. Another very important technique is change of variable. Sometimes when radicals 
will be there, it is kind of very difficult to factor or even rationalize them. So in such cases, we'll adopt change of variable. Why? So we'll have a couple examples on change of variable. It's kind of a difficult technique to start with, but very useful and important technique. And then we have a technique called one-sided limit. Absolute functions, for example, you know, are a combination of two functions, right? So when absolute function is a combination of two functions, it's a good idea to find limits from left side and from the right side and check, do we get the same limit from both the sides? If yes, then the limit exists. If not, then the limit does not exist, right? So we will have a couple of examples in these set of videos. Well, I'm putting them on YouTube, so I'm not in a position to organize them very well. I'll do my best, but it will be worthwhile for you to explore the whole playlist and look for some examples which may not be at the right place. I may add them later, right? Okay, I hope this exercise helps you to understand how to evaluate limits for any kind of function for that matter. So with these techniques, you will be able to find limits for any function whatsoever. Okay. Thank you and all the best.